you little lot. How are you? Welcome back to the Spurs Talk Show. I'm Sean Butler. Bugsy Malone is way up front somewhere doing the things that she loves to do. Keeping happy and healthy. These guys are keeping happy and healthy too out for runs on a Saturday morning. I hope you're doing whatever it is that you like to do. Please do me a favour guys, smash the like button for me on the video like you always do but only if you enjoy the content. I need to earn the like, no freebies. So let's see if I can put together a piece of content that deserves the thumb. Also hit the subscribe button. Now that's free to do. So if you just like Tottenham stuff, then hang around. Join the 18,800 fans that have gone before. Welcome back to them. Welcome to the new. If that's you, hit the notification bell and drop a comment. Let me know your thoughts on today's topic. And look, there's two transfer news and views and clues stories I want to get through today. I'll see if I can squeeze them into one video, but I might be verbose enough to need to spread it over two. So if you don't hear about the second one on this video, then keep a look out for a second video this afternoon. Let's start with Santiago Jimenez. Now look, before I get into him, congratulations to Ange Postacoglu for winning his second Manager of the Month award in only his second month in the Premier League. The first Premier League manager ever to have won August and September back to back. Not bad for a geezer from Australia. <laughs> who's never done it in the big time <sighs> leaving rival fans real salty as is the accolade for Hyung Min Sun who picks up his player of the month award for September picking up where James Madison left off in August congratulations to all of them and the team if you're winning a player of the month award you probably wouldn't be doing it unless you had the support of a great team around you so congratulations to everybody at Tottenham Hotspur and you love how salty and rattled rival fans are right now. They just they, they think that we are audacious, the audacity of Tottenham fans to think that we're part of a conversation around lifting titles and things. And you know what? I see it. I see Tottenham fans that are, you know, going out there saying, no, we're not, it's too early. We're just enjoying the ride on the crest of a wave. I see that and I hear it and I get it. I'm saying the same thing, but deep down, my expectations are shifting. Human nature. I'm not saying that we're in a title race, it's too early. The title race doesn't even start until January, but what happens before now is like qualifying for a Grand Prix. You're trying to get yourself in pole position. You've got a better chance, even if you have a slower car, you've got a better chance of doing well if you're starting the run in in the best position possible. And that's what this part of the season is about. And we need to be looking into January to give ourselves the best possible running, not just for the second half of this season, but also for next season as well. Hello, mate, you are right? Good, thanks, buddy. And to me, a player like Santiago Jimenez is the way that you do that. Now, look, we have a Lejo Valiz who's coming up, and according to all reports from Ali Gold, um, Postacoglu is unbelievably impressed with Alejo Villiers. He's got some minutes, and I'm all for it. But I think at the same time, the youth-centric approach that has one eye on the present and but the main eye on the future, it's important, and I love it. But that doesn't mean that you can't sprinkle in some here now, ready now talent that can also accelerate you in the present and also prepare you for the future. And Santiago Jimenez, for me, is one of those players that can do that. If you bring him in as a nine, then you can have conversations with the, the squad and how you want to reorganise people. Sonny and, and Jimenez can stay in the nine role and swap and pivot. You can push Sonny out to the left or to the right if anything happens to, to Deki. Richarlison, for me, is obviously... The, the kind of the, the problem area I know he's had a couple of good games but you know how I feel about him I just I think if there's a chance to liquidate that money and bring him and you know move him on let him have a fresh start somewhere else I think it would be the best with Perisic seemingly looking like he's played his last game for Tottenham he might be leaving in January to go back to Hydric Split to finish his career and finish his re, you know re, sort of rehabilitation of his injury you're never sure really what, what you're going to have with Brennan Johnson. He's got a hamstring injury. I know it's a minor one, but once your hammy goes once, you just don't know if you've got a Brennan, uh, like a Ryan Sessegnon situation on your hands. 
I think we do need some a bit more support in that area of the pitch going forward. And Santiago Jimenez is an option. You could bring him in and then you can reshuffle things out wide. It doesn't have to be the option, but the reason why I'm mentioning him today is because his agent has come out and elevated Tottenham ahead of some major clubs in the pecking order. His agent came out and said that Santiago Jimenez is in the top 10 players in Europe right now. Top 10 talents. And that loads and loads of clubs, big clubs, are after him. He said, and I quote, Inter Milan, Lazio, Napoli are all interested in him. Atletico Madrid were very interested in him. And even Tottenham Hotspur are very interested in Santiago Jimenez. And you know me, you know me, I like to speculate, infer things, read between the lines and come up with an answer for two plus two that might be bang on the money or it could be and usually is wildly inaccurate. But when he's putting out the names of clubs that are interested, that are at the highest echelons of European football in Inter and Napoli and Atletico Madrid and Lazio and then says, but above them, even Tottenham Hotspur are very interested. Then to me, that sounds like Tottenham Hotspur are top of the pecking order and that they're more desirable of a location than the other teams aforementioned. And that's exciting to me. And why wouldn't we be? We're top of the Premier League. We're playing amazing football. There's a space in the team for a player like Jimenez who gets to play with a manager who's known for developing youth and playing a brand of football that everybody wants to play. I think that if Tottenham were to go in and make a serious effort for Santiago Jimenez, I think Feyenoord would have to sell at some point if the price is right. What that price looks like, according to the report, is probably 45 to 50 million euros, depending on when it happens and what form he's in at the time. Remember, Jimenez has scored 12 goals in eight games in the Eredivisie this year. He scored 15 goals last season and most of them came in the tail end. So his kind of momentum into the finishing part of last season was, was super strong. And he started this season kicking on when a lot of the other players that had brilliant seasons last year seemingly have tailed off a little bit this year. Give Dorban, haven't heard much from him in terms of his goal scoring exploits. So, to me guys, Santiago Jimenez is a player whose agent is doing what agents have to do. Keep the, the bell ringing, the noise of the player in people's zeitgeists. But when he's talking about Tottenham at that, ex that extra level, it makes you think that that's a way of, of telling Tottenham, come and get me. Now, listen, I think if he is available, if Final are willing to sell, he won't be only targeted in the Premier League by Tottenham. Obviously, the Premier League can probably pay more salaries, generally speaking, than a lot of the teams in Italy or Spain. So that's an advantage. But I think that there's a lot of teams, a lot of top teams that are looking for number nines. Arsenal are looking for a number nine. I think most Arsenal fans have got their sights firmly set on Ivan Toney who has already intimated in the past that he'd like to play for Arsenal. You have Chelsea that are looking for another number nine because Nico Jackson hasn't really worked out the way that they were hoping. I'm surprised by that, to be honest. I think Nico Jackson is probably better set as like a, an inside forward than an out and out nine. I think his style of play is probably a little bit um, more direct. But anyway, it's off the point. Chelsea might be looking for someone else. And obviously there's not a huge amount of talent available at the top end of the pitch for the top clubs to fight over. Supply and demand economics equals Santiago Jimenez's price in my mind will end up being a lot higher than that if you wait for the end of the season and he goes on and breaks the Eredivisie goal scoring record which I think is about 42 goals and if he carries on at this current ratio then that's what's on. Obviously, you don't know what's going to happen. Injuries can flare up, form can dip. But for me, this guy is a player that I think would really fit our system. He reminds me so much, I've spoken about this before, he reminds me so much of like a Harry Kane style where he's not blessed with 
ridiculous pace. He's not slow, but he's not blessed with ridiculous pace. He's not blessed with ridiculously quick foot uh, footwork or feet. Yet he can still dribble with the ball with consummate ease, run at players, take on two players at the same time and find a way to ride through it and come out the other side of the melee with the ball at his foot. Like Harry Kane could do. He can draw fouls. He knows how to position his body to take advantage of, of the referee's inclination to to blow the whistle when you find that sort of situation just like Harry Kane he can come deep pick the ball up look left and look right and spray the ball something which is what Sonny's doing very well this season I think Sonny if you look at his stats for this season is in the top five percentile across Europe for some of those shot creating actions that have been massively beneficial to our team and obviously Sonny's getting forward and scoring goals as well so this is not in any way suggesting that Sonny is not doing brilliantly and that we need to replace him. But obviously we do need to think about the future. We do need to think about the rotation. Sonny looks like he's still playing with a bit of an injury. And we do need to find that long-term number nine that could be Alejo Valiz, but if not, could be Santiago Jimenez. Jimenez is also brilliantly two-footed. He can smash the ball with both feet. He's strong in the air. He's so intelligent. His footballing IQ for someone so young is head and shoulders above most talented players at that age. Wide range of passing. And he can get stuck in as well and, and, and press from the front and, and, and contribute to the team ethic, the teamwork that's required for an Ange system. If we're playing two games a season next season, then we, need, we will need more depth, more options, and less of a drop-off. And to me... Santiago Jimenez is just that guy. So if the agent is saying he's talking about players or talking about teams that are interested in him, he's readying the media for the move that's coming at some point. I don't suppose it will happen in January. I think it will be more likely a summer move. But like I say, the exciting part of the story is the fact that he's elevated Tottenham above the likes of Napoli and Inter and Lazio by saying... These teams are interested, but even Tottenham are interested. Things you love to hear, guys. Let me know your thoughts on Jimenez. Do you think it's necessary? Do you think if we won't see him until the summer, do you think that it's better just to give Alejo Valiz the minutes and see if we've got the superstar we need right there? Again, the only other issue on the negative side of being linked with some of these superstars, especially if they're younger, is that it creates bottlenecks on getting these youth players that are doing so well into the first team. I was gonna do my second name, but you know what guys, it's already been a 13 minute video, I'll leave it there. I'll get back to my desk and I'll record the other one. It's an interesting one, a really interesting 18 year old from Royal Antwerp, that stats look phenomenal and that Tottenham are interested in as a DM, a central midfielder to come in and play back up to, uh, to Bissouma for next season. We'll talk about that later. Keep a lookout, like, subscribe and comment. And as always guys, Bye-bye.